Good morning! Welcome to the Gospel of Joy. My name is Reverend Josh Knappenberger. I am the pastor at St. James UCC in Allentown on 15th Street. If this is your first time with us, thank you. And I hope to give you enough laughs to get through today. And if not, I hope, I hope you'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> and if not, I hope to give you enough laughs to get through today. And if this is if you've been with us before, thank you and welcome back. You can check the YouTube channel out to see any videos you've missed in the past. Uh, they're all up there. Today's isn't up there yet because I'm doing it right now. But don't forget to tag, tell, and share your friends about the about these videos. Um, people are bored. They need something to watch. They need some something to laugh at. Something funny. Uh, you can give them this. I know people are struggling and they need a laugh right now. Uh, just send them this video and they can laugh and have a good time and have joy and laughter. And joy and laughter does very little good if nobody hears it. Good morning, Fred. Good to have you with us. Uh, also, in front of St. James UCC on 15th Street, there is a book box ministry for the community. It might be empty. There might be some there. I don't know. Uh, I haven't been by to check it in a while. But uh, if you just need an outing, you can go check it out. All right, my buddies. My first buddy today, I had a little trouble with him holding his weapons, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Let me put the sword there, and he has at least one of them. All right, this is another dinosaur transformer. He transforms into a brontosaurus, and you can see his, his brontosaurus head there, and his name is Sludge, and that's his sword, and he's a pretty cool, pretty cool transformer. Yep. And it is Wednesday. Good morning, Margaret. And it is Wednesday, unlike yesterday when I thought it was Wednesday, but it really wasn't. So I got a pretty a pretty uh pretty cool winged transformer to show you. And This is him. I don't know if his wingspan can fit in the fit in the uh, in the shot, uh, but this is another transformer from the Beast Wars Transformer series. The later seasons were called Beast Wars Transmetals, and that just is a fancy name for the for the toy line. But um, his wingspan. It's Wednesday, so he's a winged transformer. His wingspan is about two feet from the lart from the longest point, which is here and here, and the wings can fold up. But I had them out to show you how impressive they would be. He transforms into a dragon, a fire breathing dragon, by the way. And these come out and a sword. So <laughs> his wings are dangerous. He's got a tail in the back here. Uh, this is a like a flamethrower in his arm right here. So he he's one of my one of my cooler transformers, especially with the wings. He's very impressive, and yeah. So and he's a version of Megatron, which is the leader of the uh, of of the evil transformers. So those are my buddies today. And I spend a lot of time talking about him because I think he's really cool. <laughs> those are my buddies today. I'll set him right there because there's really no room for him anywhere else. Okay. Oh, good morning, Joni. I hope everyone's safe and healthy too. Happy Wednesday to you too, Tammy. And good morning, Carl. It's great to have you all with us. Now, I'll be honest. When I was a little excited when the stay-at-home order began. I was. I like being indoors. I like being around my material items, the things I can't take to heaven with me. I figure I may as well enjoy them for as much time as I can down here. You know, I can't take them to heaven with me, but I accumulate them anyway, as we all do. And, 
you all know what I'm talking about. I just showed you two of them. Although I was perfectly happy working from home, staying at home, etc., I'm starting to miss some of the simpler things, like taking my daughter to hang out with her cousins, going to the local comic shop on Wednesday to connect with my friends there and visiting other friends in their homes and having them come over to my house. But I think what I miss most is being able to get a haircut. It is one of the simplest things that I can't do right now. Now, my hair has gone through some transformations in its time. When I was in high school, I was lazy. My hair grew so long, it covered my eyes, and I would do the whole head shake thing to get it out of my eyes so that I could see. And my dad, partially joking, said he was afraid I was going to break my neck trying to get my hair out of my eyes. Um, and then I joined the Army. And that was the end of that. <laughs> my hair was out of my face for a good 13 straight years. Then I left the army, and in defiance, I let my hair grow out again within reason. A few years ago, I decided that the army cut was more who I am, and now uh, it, I feel like my hair is getting too long. <laughs> Even though there's, there's still not much there, it's still getting too long. Yeah, Fred, I'm, I'm right there with you. Speaking of hair, this is an aside. I'm going to tell you the story really quick. My best friend, Eric Kukarik. I was in the Army, and he was in college. And while my hair was short for being in the Army, he grew his out so long that it was, all, that it was past his shoulders a bit. We all have our phases. Nevertheless, in this world, we get into comfortable routines, and that's okay. We have to remember that sometimes God comes in and says, no, we're going to change this routine. I think of Jesus praying in Gethsemane. He wasn't asking for a haircut. But he did say, let this cup pass from me. I like the way things are. The movement is doing great. More people are joining. I just did this great thing with the disciples where I, I, I likened my body and my blood to, to, um, to bread and wine. They loved it. But even Jesus, the bringer of some of the greatest change in the history of the world, didn't want things to change. But for the salvation of the world, he realized it had to change. And that change was forced on him as we see him praying in the garden. The thing about change, for me, it's not the new thing that's happening that's the problem so much as what I'm giving up to make way for the new thing. I grieve those things that aren't happening anymore because... I miss them. I grieve not getting my hair cut. I grieve not spending time with my friends. And it's okay to grieve such things like that. Revelation 21, however, says God shall wipe every tear and our grief will end. Now, the end of this pandemic won't bring the wiping away of every tear. But we will find our comfortable routines again. We have hope that this will happen because of what happened less than a week after Jesus prayed in the garden. Jesus' resurrection gives us proof of, proof of the hope we carry within us. And that is a hope of which we dare not let go. We dare not let it go because, say it with me, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Jesus Christ, and we will get our hair cut again, I promise. Amen. On with the funnies. Don't forget to comment and tell me which joke you like best. Get some conversation going. Good morning, Wendy. And yes, Eric, I remember the picture of you with the two dogs. Um, 
Wolfgang and Otto on the couch and your hair's all, ah, oh, it was re really long. Ah, oh, but I'm not here to reminisce. We can reminisce sometime later. Okay, I got some Mother's Day meditations for you. This one was said by Abraham Lincoln. All that I am and all that I ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. And you know, um, that's, that's very true for me too. When I got married and I had my mother's dance, I had the song, I'm Everything I Am Because You Loved Me, uh, by Celine Dion playing. So that, that was very true. And my mom and I both cried, of course. Okay, this one was sent in by Catherine Hall of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. An elderly woman in a nursing home declined her pastor's suggestion that she get a hearing aid. At 91, I've heard enough, she said. I can just imagine. A well-liked minister in a small town church was offered twice his salary to move to a large church in a big city. A church member encountered the minister's daughter in a shop. Is your father going to accept the church's offer in the big city? The church member replied. The daughter asked. The daughter replied, I don't know. He's been on his knees praying for divine guidance this morning. And what's your mother's doing? And what's your mother doing? Oh, she's upstairs packing, the daughter said. That one was also sent in by Catherine Hall of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. An Israeli tour guide told his group of tourists as they stood among ancient ruins, this is the site of an ancient synagogue. It was built 2,003 years ago. The tourists were duly impressed at the precision of the date for the structure. That's amazing, said one. How do you know the exact year? Well, said the guide, the, archaeology told, the archaeologist told me it was 2,000 years old, and that was three years ago. That was sent in by Paul Thigpen of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, that's an archaeology joke, too. I remember being an archaeologist in Israel. That was a fun time. Maybe I'll tell some stories about it sometime. Okay, this one is entitled New Pastor Warranty. With a title like this, it's got to be good. It has come to our attention that the pastor you received was shipped with a slight defect. He is not psychic. Because of this, you must observe certain procedures to ensure optimum performance. It is necessary to inform him of any members who are hospitalized. If someone you know is in need of prayer, the pastor must be told or he won't know. If you are in need of a pastoral visit, you will get best results if you ask him. We regret any inconvenience this may cause. Oh, yes. It's a shame pastors aren't psychic, but we're not. This one's just entitled Sunday Morning, and this is one of my favorites. Mother called, her, called to her son on Sunday morning to make sure he got out of bed and was ready for church. Not going, he replied from under the covers. Yes, you are going, so get out of that bed, his mother demanded. The elders hate me. I'm pretty sure the kids don't like me. And the ladies of the church want, want to get rid of me. I'm not going. Give me one good reason why I should go. I'll give you three good reasons. One, I'm your mother and I say you're going. Two, you're 40 years old, so you're old enough to know better. And three, you are the pastor, so you need to be there. It's a Mother's Day joke, too. And I got two cartoons for you. The one is a simple one. The guy is standing 
in front of St. Peter in the Book of Life, and St. Peter says, last four digits of your social security number? Yeah, when I get to heaven, I hope I don't need that to identify me. I hope God knows who I am. And then we have this one where that is Job in the bed, and he's dying, and a scribe is dictating his story. And it says, Job, readers will love it where God asks you who laid the earth's foundation, who made the ocean depths, the starry skies, and the awesome creatures of the earth and sea. But I'm going to leave out the part where he asks you who made little green apples. I guess little green apples aren't impressive enough to make it into that into that uh, that speech that God makes. So, okay. And that's where we'll leave it today. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for for bringing change and for being with us during that change. Thank you for watching over us in this time. Thank you for keeping us safe and preparing us for the resurrection that is coming. It is long, long in the future, but we know it is coming. Be with us in the days ahead. Watch over us. And make sure that we are ready when that resurrection comes to create routines once again. Amen. All right, remember to do one thing that gives you joy every day and stay healthy and stay safe. And, you know, I want to say a little something about the, uh, the daily message. It can be a little bit of a struggle for me to come up with topics sometimes, mainly because I don't know what you all are struggling with and what you need to hear about. If you have something you're struggling with, um, and you would like me to give a message on it, just give um, private message me or leave a message in the comments, uh, and I'll do what I can to address it. Uh, more than a week ago, one of the viewers sent me a text, and out of that text, I got like four days worth of stuff to talk about. So if you have something you're struggling with, let me know. And if I can't address it, I will. Because we all need to have our issues, our problems, our concerns uh, voiced and discussed in a, in a biblical way in the, um, in, the, uh, in the context of hope. And uh, yeah, so as you all know, I am here at 10.30 every day, just uh, during the stay-at-home stay order. And don't forget to give what you can, when you can, to your churches. Your pastors are still working. Your buildings are still in need of maintenance. And uh, in many ways, if you don't give, in many situations, if you don't give, you may not have a church to return to when all this is over. So give what you can, when you can, and just, you know, be faithful with that. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Now may God keep you in the stitches of laughter and love today, tomorrow, and into eternal life. Amen. God bless.